Hello everyone, thanks for joining once again. Today we are pleased to have two special guests with us. It's Alex Carlucci and Dale Elenteni from Gustin Cho Associates and Nexa Mortgage. Today we're going to discuss what events or what things could result in an increase in housing inventory. And I know that some people are waiting for the inventory to increase so they can find the home that they're looking for. Now the uh, original introduction to these two uh, special guests was corrupted on the file, so this is why I'm doing it here. And right now we're gonna join the discussion very early in the discussion. We're gonna join in towards the beginning, uh, right at this moment, and I hope you enjoy the conversation we're having. And you can, you can uh, in the links down below in the description, I'll put uh, in there where you can reach out to Alex or Dale. Thank you. So we want to talk about what things need to occur to create more inventory, which will in turn potentially lower some of the, the house prices. So I want to turn it over to the uh, gentleman here to see who's got uh, an idea or, or a concept that might that might help. Let me, start let me offer off. something. Go ahead. Uh, Alex, yeah, let me throw something out there. And this is speculative, but it could happen. We've talked about this on some of our previous episodes, but I feel like uh, from people I talk to, and even as a homeowner myself, like, you know, if I wanted to move and you have a low interest rate, you know, a historically low interest rate, but the rates drop back into the fives, I think that's going to get some people off the stump, so to speak, and say, you know what, I want to downsize, I want to move out of state, whatever their reasoning is. 5% is a little bit more palatable, even low sixes right now to do it versus eight. What do you think, Alex? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I rate drop is my first on my list too. So, I mean, not only do we need a higher inventory for prices maybe to come down, um, more selection. So prices don't keep going up, but also a better choice of quality of houses. People are buying houses they really don't want. But I do think if rates were to drop in the fives, we would see people that, you know, were in the threes or fours. That are sitting there saying, I can't upgrade to my house. I got a great job. I got a promotion. My kid starts kindergarten next year. I got to get into this neighborhood. And, and that might force them to do that. If rates drop, that might be the 5% might be enough to get them to make that move. Now, what could happen when rates drop is we could see more and more sellers and the buyers don't keep up. Prices could, could come down a little bit. So people are going to get deals. They're going to get more selection and they're going to be able to make that transition because they're they're going to be able to give up that lower rate because five is close enough to three and a half. So there's a lot of things good that could happen from lower rates, but there's a lot of bad things that could happen from lower rates. We could we could see another inflationary spike and the Fed has to come back and raise rates even worse, like the 70s. So we got to be careful rooting for low rates. We don't want three percent overnight in the next six months. It could cause <laughs> there's nowhere to go from there. So we want to see the stair step down slowly and find that sweet spot where there's some activity that there's a good balance with buyers and sellers. I think, Alex, like you said, either way, whether it's the rates going down or the rates going up, sharp swings of, you know, when you're going down three percentage points in six months or going up three percent, it's just not healthy. No, it's not. Now, the other yeah. thing that can cause inventory, Eric, Eric, tell me if you agree with this. The other thing that could cause a, a surplus of available inventory is distress in the employment markets. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if people are losing their jobs, they're going to have issues making their payments. They could either, they may have to sell uh, or they'll just get foreclosed upon if they can't make their mortgage payments. And, you know, the, back in 2008, that was one of the, the things that caused the housing market to drop, which was, a glut of foreclosure inventory that ended up hitting the market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people, people had those option arms and, <laughs> you know, or adjustable rates, which are similar. And next thing you know, their payment jumped way up, couldn't afford it. And that's what happened. So yeah, absolutely. I think you're, you're correct, Dale. Yeah. I think we're definitely on a precipice of maybe an increase in, un in unemployment and that will, definitely increase sellers, hopefully not where they're foreclosing. That's a horrible situation, but maybe, hey, you know, I this house is a little too much. I can sell, I can downsize because there's other houses for sale and they can downsize into something smaller. Hopefully it's a nice orderly uh, process and not people just, you know, having to be foreclosed upon because that's a horrible situation. Yeah. 
two thousand yeah. was ugly. So I think yeah, it's what I, I think that's exactly right. I think there's some people that are probably in the top end of what they could afford right now. Yeah. And if they see some type of a drop or they could step into something that gives them a little bit of relief, I think you'll see that happen, like you said. Yeah, and the equity people have in their homes right now is a good cushion for them to to be able to get out if they're uh, you know if they lose their job. There's a lot of cushion right now. Yeah. Now in the state of Florida, again we we talk about some unique situations and there's things happening in certain markets that uh, create a situation where housing market the housing uh, prices decline. You know Florida was a hot spot. Everyone was leaving to go to Florida because they could work remote. I may as well live in the sun. If I can work remote, I don't have to live in, you know, Chicago where you guys are or New York market where I am. And, and, you know, I always wanted to live in a warm climate, but then hurricane Ian happened. And next thing you know, insurance rates went through the roof. So now it's not as easy to afford a home in Florida with the crazy insurance rates that that they've experienced. So that's something that, you know, that's unique to say that state that is causing the prices to drop there too. And once you compound that with additional inventory, you know, it's going to drop way down again, in my opinion. Yeah, people's insurance in Florida is definitely taking what they thought were as affordable housing for them to now unaffordable. And it's happening not just to houses, condominiums uh, quadrupled the HOA fees on people because their insurance quadrupled. It, it went, um, I saw stories went up from 300,000 to insure a condo building that the, the condo itself has to pay per year to over a million. So yeah. these people are, they're passing it down to the condo owners and HOA dues and quadrupling their HOA fees. And now they can't afford where they're, where they're living. So insurance is a, a sure. double whammy. Like it's it's hitting the condos and the single family homes. Sure. And let's take the condo thing a little bit farther. Okay. So when the storms happened, a lot of the condos had a lot of repairs to make and it ate into their reserves. Okay. Right. So now all of a sudden this condo potentially is non-warrantable because they don't have the reserves needed. Right. Which makes that condo less marketable because you can't get a conventional or FHA loan. You have to get a non-QM type of a product with higher rates and larger down payment. And, you know, and it, it could potentially, you know, push the prices of those buildings down a little bit, too, because of the type of mortgage that you need. And speaking of insurance, if you looked at CPI number today, that's consumer price index. It's the inflation number that the Fed looks at. It, car insurance went up 20% in the last um, year, 20%. So insurance companies are increasing every, on all on all levels. They're, they're raising the rates. And that's because car yeah. prices are going up and everything's going up. And there's and it's just it, everything, the prices are going up. So the insurance goes up. So I've been with my car insurance for years. I've done nothing wrong, but the cost to replace my car or fix it has gone up. So therefore my rates go up and it's, Insurance is definitely putting a little hamper on our economy right now. No question about it. Dale, what do you think? Well, that's kind of, you know, that's that's more or less payment shock, what you're talking about. We, we talk about it in like the New York and Chicago markets with property taxes, which we just went through an increase here in our market. Same with insurance. You know, it's it, it could potentially flush people out of houses. It's that tight for some people. Like yeah. $600 a month could change somebody's, you know, position on owning that particular home yeah i've talked I, to people i've talked to people that you know it that it, it could become too much people are starting to decide what to pay for in their bills which what they're not going to pay right. for what they are going to pay for it's coming to that point right now absolutely yeah, and, and the increase in everything puts a squeeze on the housing market okay yeah. Yeah. so if the the uh car insurance goes up and we know groceries are the pricing never came back down, even though the supply chain thing was resolved. You know, once the prices go up, no one pulls them back down again, unless there's crazy competition forcing it. Everything else, fuel is still too expensive. So then, you know, people just can't afford the, the payment on, mm -hmm. on the mortgage. And another, you know, people are just going to be less qualified at this point. So they say the, the best cure for inflation 
is inflation. And I think that we're entering that point where inflation's causing people not to buy houses, which is affecting mortgage brokers like us, realtors, title companies. And then picture the, all the things that the realtors, mortgage brokers, title companies, insurance agents, all where they shop. Now they don't go shopping at, at their local Macy's not down the street. And that Macy's starts to hurt or that hot dog stand starts to hurt right next to the mortgage company or right next to the real estate office. All the paper that the real estate office buys, that paper company sales guy's hurting. It starts trickling through the furniture sales way down. When people buy a house, they go out and they start redoing their house immediately. It's like an addiction. You buy a house, it triggers lawnmowers, snowblowers, ovens, cabinets, painting, landscaping. It just goes on and on and on that those, those things aren't being triggered along the, along the rest of the economy. So I expect that's how inflation is going to be taken care of is by people not being able to afford to pay for anything anymore. And it's going to be a race to sell your things cheaper before it gets you know too cheap. And the same with the housing market. There might be a race to sell your house at the top. And then people are going to chase it down and drive the prices down. Yeah, true. Yeah. However, if I had a hot dog stand next to my office, I wouldn't be moving. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric, the one thing we talked about before, and I still encourage people, if you can afford it, that's the most, is, is to buy now. Because you, when you're in a tight inventory environment like we're in, and you get into a drop, and the interest rates start to drop, you get into very competitive situations on these houses. Right. And a lot of times you might not be able to compete. You might not be able to put $40,000 over the asking price. Right. right. You could always refinance later if you buy now, but it's tough right. to come up yeah. with that sort of surplus of money above the asking price. Yeah. So what I noticed, there's certain, there's definitely a lot of places in this country, there's still great deals to buy houses and aren't going to collapse like the Florida market might, but there's plenty of great opportunities still. Like North Carolina is phenomenal. Chicago didn't really go up that much. It hasn't seen that dramatic increase like the rest of the country has. So there's still Tennessee's got some great deals, low taxes. So there's still great deals out there. It's not necessarily all inflated all over the country. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll add this, like what I'm doing, any of my clients that are looking to buy, I am actually running them through underwriting, even though I know that um, – more than likely they're going to be approved. I just want to get far enough down the line because of the limited inventory where they can get in there as fast as they can because it's just competitive Yeah, to get those homes that are yeah. available. They're not going to wait 45 days, a lot of these sellers. Not if somebody can come in and say, we'll close you in three weeks. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are experiencing, but that's what I'm doing. So let me, uh, let me talk about another wave that could happen i'm not sure but uh airbnb was a big popular thing over the last four years and there's a lot of people that had no business becoming an airbnb owner and mm -hmm. it was easy money prices of the house were going up there was so much money flush vacationers going on vacation all the time airbnb was the hottest thing there was nothing negative about it and now negative things are coming out about it it's the economy slowing a little bit vacationers are are choosing maybe a hotel over the the Airbnb that they have to make their bed. They want to be catered to. They want to go walk downstairs and have a restaurant. They want to walk to the beach. They want their laundry cleaned every day for them, whatever, et cetera. So, and when you get the slowing economy and not as many people renting the Airbnb beers that were weak, that should never have gotten into it. They can't carry two months of not renting out their house. They're going to start selling. And there's a lot of those. So that's, that's another source yeah. I think of a, of a, where inventory could increase from. I agree with that. that. Goes back to, go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. That, yeah, I mean, I was hearing some stats about how 2023 the uh, Airbnb rentals were down 65 percent versus the prior year. Okay, and I I know stories of people I've spoken to that were saying they had to drop prices to like fifty dollars a night just to <clears throat> get something to come in. And then another situation occurred. There's a friend of mine that's in our business that I've known him for 20 years in the mortgage business, he bought a home in Florida that he was going to, you know, vacation to and also Airbnb most of the time. And it was in an HOA. And then suddenly the HOA decided they didn't want to allow for short-term rentals in there anymore. <laughs> uh oh, that can so, happen. 
you know? And now it's like, oh crap, I got this house. It's supposed to be an investment. Now I can't make any money in there. What am I going to do? I may have to rent it out to someone for a year lease. That's about it. So. I'm seeing a lot of Airbnbers flip to one year leases now just because it's it's too inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. Not everywhere, but a lot of places. Well, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, everybody's day to day life has become more expensive, whether you're filling up your gas tank, the grocery store, whatever. And that affects your, you know, your, your income that you would maybe use for a vacation or for an Airbnb where you're, you're not going to do it, you know, or maybe you only do it for a night or two. And it's going to leave a lot of vacancies for these owners. And do they have the financial wherewithal to sustain it? Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. So another source, I don't know if you guys saw this in the news. I haven't, I've not done any research on it. I saw a blip on it, but uh, I saw a couple blips on it. So I know it's real that the government is going to force BlackRock and these blue ribbon companies to sell their portfolio of homes because they think it's not right that they have it. This bill, it's in front of Congress to pass it and to prevent them from being buyers of homes and becoming the landlords of America. Like they try, like they're trying to do. If that passes, that would cause oh. a nice increase increase the homes in a, a steady supply going forward. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why there were no homes is corporations were buying homes. True. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you did have a lot of that. I also fielded, I don't know how many calls a day from, you know, just individuals that wanted to jump in on this Yeah. and their cash, you know, every deal was cash flowing because the interest rates are so low. Right. Yeah. And so now, you know, it's not the case as much. You know, you have to, the, the, the deals that are actually best in those situations are the $100,000 homes in Ohio, right? And they're still getting, you know, eighteen fifty two thousand a month rent. Right, right. And uh, so, you know, those things are still good deals, but those are the, those are the, uh, that's the exception, not the, not the norm. Right. Yeah, the margins are tight. Another way that we could see an increase of homes, which this would be a disaster for America, but everybody gets a 40% pay raise. <laughs> if everybody gets a pay raise, then now inflation, rate, yeah. No, inflation will go up again, Alex. You know that. I mean, just like, I, absolutely. Just like when, when the pandemic happened, everyone was getting this check from the government and they were all buying new cars hey, and, hey. you know, and, and forgot that that was going to stop at some point. Hey, UPS, UPS gave their, their people raises. The car union, uh, UAW, lost up, and they gave 40% raises. It's spread over three years, but they're going to get 40%. Um, teenagers in California are making like $22 an hour now. From you know, When I was a kid, it was $3 an hour. So they're uh -huh. making, making yeah. wages. And so Pizza Hut had to fire a bunch of California delivery people because they had minimum wage, and they couldn't afford it. So they're going to have like DoorDash deliver their pizzas now because they can't right. afford the pizza delivery guys. So... It, that could that could be. I mean, everybody gets a raise. I mean, it, it could get ugly out there. This would be a disaster. So that's one of my worries about the rates dropping too aggressively in the near future. Is it's going to create people demanding wages to chase these prices of homes and goods again? Because if rates drop, it's it's a buying frenzy again. So what my opinion, and I think I may have shared this on one of our other videos in the past, is I think rates should be kind of where they're at now, for the most part. And then on occasion, uh, rates should be dropped a couple of points, but for a short period of time, allowing enough people to refinance to help with their cash flow or maybe cash out a little bit, but only for a few months, not for years like we just experienced last time, because you need to have a, a long, a long, uh, you know, quite a few months, a long time of of home sales at those low rates to create the bump in the pricing in the housing market. Right. You, you need to have those comps starting to roll and continue for a while to drive the prices up. However, when people take advantage of the low rates to refinance, there's no comps that anyone can look up. Right. Right. So they're able to help their, their payment but there's not enough time to impact the housing market so much. That's my my personal opinion on this. There was a time about a year ago that I, I remember rates when they were hitting six and a quarter, 
we were busy and they went to 6.875 and it was dead. And then it would go down to six and a quarter. We were busy again. I'm like, okay, they found it. Here's the governor. They found where that engine's running and where it right. stops that and where it accelerates that. And it was hovering there for a while. And I'm like, this is, is the government controlling this? Are they that good? And, but then it disappeared and rates went through the roof. But there right. was a time where the, they can sense the activity and they can run it there and not let it get too hot, not let it get too cold. And that's where, mm -hmm. that's where we should be at. Yeah. True. But I just heard it again today. We are still at a historic lows for available listings around the country. Lowest sales in history with with uh, houses pending home sales right now. Lowest ever. The amount of houses yes. are closing, not under contract, but are closing. Lowest mm -hmm. ever. Right. So. Yeah. So any other ideas, guys? That's all I got. That's yeah. all I have. I think so. I think we've, you know, talked about all the scenarios and we yeah. we all we all would prefer the housing market to come down just a little bit to make it more affordable to, for people so that way people can afford to you know move and upgrade or change their homes too because they feel like they're trapped because they're in a home with a two and a half or three percent rate and if they sell the house they're in now their payment will jump because of where rates are at and we need we need the house, a combination of rates to come down, which they did a bit, and housing markets to to drop a little bit too. Yeah, so that way, prices, you know, prices go down a little bit, rates come down a little bit. I think we got a nice little yeah. equilibrium yep. of, of yeah. stability. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I appreciate you both joining me again today. Thank you very much, everyone who's watching. You can get in touch with Dale and Alex. Uh, uh, through the links down below in the uh, description. I'll leave links to their websites so you could uh, find them there. And um, if you have, if you guys want to talk about getting back into the market, you should start your, you know, getting your application together and have a conversation with a loan officer now in preparation for this so you're not scrambling when you suddenly find a house that you really want. Maybe fix your credit, whatever it needs to be done. You need to speak to a loan officer ahead of time. So, Thanks again, guys. Thank right, you, everyone thank else, you. for watching. And uh, we will. Thanks. We will, yep. Thank you. We'll see you next time, everyone. Goodbye. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks.